Hello, potato. Today we have gone up the hill to do a, uh, a fall tradition in this area, and that is visit Apple Hill. Yes, it's the uh, place where people from the area come up to look at leaves, change colors, spend way too much money on pumpkins, and uh, in another month, way too much on Christmas trees, and uh, look at some interesting crafts, find foods frequently made with apples, but not necessarily. And, uh, of course, also lots of stuff that is not uh, necessarily craft, but looks kind of crafty. Looks, looks artisan, though it's probably made in mass quantities in foreign lands and imported here through AliExpress. Yeah, it's been a couple years since we've been up here, so it looks like a fair number of things have changed. Last time we were here was still in the middle of COVID. And... Obviously, we are, we've accepted that as part of our life now. And, you know, no masks, no, no precautions for most of us. So uh, it should be interesting that uh, things here should be back to about as like they were before the world ended as they're going to get. So uh, today, let's look around. We're starting out here at High Hill Ranch, uh, largely because it's just kind of most convenient to the freeway but we're gonna gonna check a few other places as well look for interesting foods crafts adorable little displays like this and uh, just see what there is to see so let's let's go find i think find some breakfast first it's uh, fairly early see you want to get here early this it's a double-edged sword getting here early one edge is as you can see here a lot of things aren't actually open yet but the other is, it's much, much easier to park, and uh, the traffic isn't as bad. Uh, as I'm recording this, it is a week before Halloween, so traffic is probably going to get quite bad as the day progresses. So we've come early, we can hit our places, get out, get home, get this edited, and get it posted for you to view if you want to. So yeah, let's head on in. Well, first of all, head on in here, because there's actually something specific I am looking for. I saw images of it last year, so we're going to see if they still have it this year. And uh, and here's where you get the apple donuts. I'm not a fan of apple donuts. Really, really not. The, the fritters are good, though. So, you know, maybe do one of those. Maybe look at a little savory for breakfast. I don't know yet. But let's, uh, let's look around and see what there is to see. Of course, here you do get lots of kind of fancy olives and pickles and sauces because they're trying to get people from, you know, who come from the Bay Area and stuff to come and buy these little habanero olives. That could be interesting. There's a specific olive I'm looking for, but I don't, I'm not seeing it. They may not have it anymore. Ooh, this is all changed. This used to all be apples back here, and now it's uh, largely vinegar and oil. So, yeah, time changes, things change. Let's keep looking around. So we decided not to start out with something savory after all. We are going sweet. We went to the donut shack and uh, well, I don't care for the apple donuts. Uh, I don't I don't think they taste very good. They remind me of a uh, of a cake we made when I was in high school in cooking class where the idea was to substitute applesauce for the sugar and it tasted awful no matter what you put on it and that's kind of what those donuts always remind me of. Your mileage may vary. 
So I've gone with the apple fritter, which is, um, those were quite nice. A few, a few years back in a video, I think I did, um, they used to do an apple fritter ice cream sandwich here. And even though it was like far too cold for one, I went ahead and had one anyways. But today, I don't know if they're doing the sandwich. I didn't see it on the menu, but I've just started, decided to go with a uh, basic apple fritter glazed. Give it a try. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, it's what you'd expect from an apple fritter, right? I will say I rather think there are more apples in here than you get in your average donut shop apple fritter. And of course the ones here are going to be fresh from High Hill Ranch apple trees as opposed to the ones at the local donut shop which undoubtedly come out of a can of apple pie filling. So it's pretty good. Uh, it's a good way to start, get some, get the sugar going, get woken up. It is still pretty early in the day. So uh, yeah, let's get some sugar in me and then we'll go look around some more. Now there is more to do here other than just eat and drink and look at crafts. You can also, uh, you know, if you're a city folk and you don't, you don't have a lot of nature around you, you can do a little fishing, five bucks to fish. Uh, but then of course they, they do get you all the other stuff. You have to pay seven bucks to rent the pole, a dollar for more bait. And then if you catch anything, because there's no catch and release, it's two dollars from the cleaning bag and then twelve dollars per pound. So, that $5 pass to fish seems like a good deal, but it adds up very quickly should you actually successfully catch anything in here. In this obviously very natural pond with the undoubtedly there's gotta be some natural spring there in the center, just bubbling the water up into it. But it's a, it's a picturesque shot. It's like this, just don't get the fishing shack in it and just take a picture like this. I mean, yeah, the little, the little scarecrow there kinda detracts a little bit, but otherwise, it's a nice little shot. Anything you want to say? No? Okay. I'll, I'll let you get on with your stuff then. Sixteen ducks. Wow! Here's the tall duck. It's still showing its butt to us. I somehow feel like that's just good advice in general. If you walk past through High Hill, there's actually another attraction up here, and uh, they are, they very much want you, at least in the past, they very much wanted you to know that they are not a part of High Hill Ranch, and that is the Fudge Factory. And this is a new thing this year, they have vendors. Uh, I don't think they've ever seen them have vendors out here before. The Fudge Factory is you know, it's your standard kind of touristy candy shop. Looks like it's actually not too busy. Maybe we can get in and take a look around. And then we'll come look at the uh, the craft stuff. Or maybe we won't video that because a lot of crafters don't want their stuff videoed. But we can certainly look at some handmade chocolates. Thank you. In here you have a veritable Wonka's Paradise of sweets. You've got prepackaged fudge, got sour blasting powder, got it's like uh, various kinds of barks and fudges you can get by the pound, got frozen pies. What else here? Got these. I've had these for mega spoon candies, marshmallows and caramel. It's very very sweet. Probably not something I'm going to be doing today. Get some frozen blueberries in there. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nice, a nice little shop. They have a s'mores on a stick. Surprising they don't have the uh, the freeze-dried candy. That seems like that's a big thing this year. 
But uh, that didn't get the special sodas too. Apple wedges. Yep, they've uh, I think they've upped their game in here since the last time we've been in. You know, if you substitute that for coffee, I would agree. Teddy bears. This is one of the best traditions of Nina and I have. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And we will do it until we die. We have an entire cabinet of pretty much just different kinds of gongs to help swell the ranks of your Gonk army. Also have a, not a Grinch, but a Grouch in training. I think, I think Oscar the Grouch is also actually trademarked. We even have some Halloween Gonks. Can someone explain to me what the fascination is with Halloween and yoga? Like yoga skeletons, yoga mummified cats? I, I don't get it. That's pretty cool though. They even have carved wooden gongs and frankly a very awesome looking Sasquatch chair at the California Robots. I think this is the same booth we see at the fair. It's only a very similar trailer if it's not the same one.
you know, banks and um, credit union. I don't know how fast they're, 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 they're probably younger than I am. Yeah, right? See, this is why you come early because it gets busy here very, very fast. Once the, uh, the leafers show up, they show up in force. Not that I'm, you know, not that I'm exactly rural myself. I'm in the suburb and sprawl, but I mean, I can just go like to the walking path and see trees changing color. I don't have to drive up here for that. I drive up here for the crafts and the food and uh, the crowds. Yes, definitely, definitely for the crowds. So just as things are getting crowded at High Hill, we have moved on to our second stop today, and that is Boa Vista, which uh, usually this is where we get to pies. Also, usually this is where you can actually see them doing some more apple work. Like there's usually uh, an active cider press here. Of course, we have a pumpkin patch, which is one thing that High Hill didn't have. And hopefully maybe we can find some, uh, some, like, some savory food items there. They had some stuff in the pie house at High Hill, but Nothing, nothing can come. I guess, I guess you can't order food from here anymore. This used to be a, a food vendor. They, they do kind of uh, walled it off. But this one also looks like there's a lot more actual apples here. High Hill didn't have a lot of the, uh, the apples. Maybe they were all going in the donuts or something. Or, I don't know. But this one, we have apple beer, hard ciders. We have more wine. They had wine to the other one, too. They had a, a wine shack there. We didn't go to it. We can even line up here. Ooh, let's get, let's get some samples of wine and cider. Not wine and cider, fruit and cider. Jackson. Jackson. White pumpkin. And for you, sir? Um, could you have the Shinko Asian pear, please? Sure. Thank you. So the Shinko Asian pear. Never had one before? Let's see how they are. Oh, really sweet. Which one? Really sweet for a pear. Okay. Thank you. Anything else or are you good for now? Um, can I try the candy crisp apples? I like the Arkansas Thank you. There you go. And the candy crisp. Thank you. A little harder, a little firmer than the pear. Pretty good. Got a Mutsu apple. Mm, that's a very apple-y apple. Very juicy. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I try the cider, please? Thank you. And of course, you can't come to Boa Vista without trying cider. They used to do samples of cider at High Hill. They didn't have them anymore. The cider house is just like another barbecue place now, but let's try some Boa Vista apple cider. Yep. Just like drinking an apple. Not only is there like a bigger selection of fruit here, the inside of the store is a little bit more open and spread out. Now I'm thinking there was a specific type of olive I was looking for at High Hill. And I'm wondering if maybe I'm misremembering and it was actually Boa Vista that had them. They certainly seem to have a lot of different options. Spicy Asian garlic olive. Oh, no, it's actually garlic. Mm. If I don't find anything I'm looking for, that actually would not be a bad option either. Well, that's a that's a jarred stuff. I don't 
truffle mustard, chipotle mustard. A lot of good stuff. You know, there used to be, actually, a lot of the stuff they had at these was uh, just like brands you could buy elsewhere, like especially shops. It seems like they've really kind of veered the other way and gone a lot more, at least to their own brand labels, than they used to do. Well, that's an interesting change. The wine tasting now actually uh, costs. It used to just be you get samples, but uh, now now you're actually paying for it. So they have ciders. Do they have uh... it says ciders? I'm not seeing. Uh... Oh, just on tap. Well, well, I'm driving, so that's probably not going to happen. So they aren't doing samples of them, but uh, they are selling the Boa Vista Hard Cider. So I think I think we'll get a bottle of this, and that'll be a future you don't have to be happy hour item. Also picking up the spicy Asian garlic, which will also be a future video. And then I got those olives from the uh, high, high Hill. Yeah, High Hill. That's where I got it from. And uh, that'll also be it. It's all like a whole like an Apple Hill week coming up here in November, which is stuff we picked up today. But uh, aside from shopping here, there's stuff to look at too. I do want to go look at see at the cider press. There usually are some uh, some crafting booths off to the uh, past of this area. So uh, definitely not done here yet, and then we're definitely not done after that with Apple Hill for this year. So uh, let's go look at some other stuff. There's a canning set. That could be useful. We didn't already have that stuff. Look, it's a whole booth of just gonks. Well, they're not just gonks. There's some, like, octopi there, too, it looks like. But mostly gonks. It's like they're setting up the cider press, but it's not not quite ready just yet. They just dumped a whole load of apples into there. And there's a the finished product there already. Yeah, sadly it looks like they are not not quite ready to do another load just yet. Maybe they've like maybe just finished one. So maybe maybe if we come back a little bit later, they'll have another load set up. So it looks like there uh, may not be anything to hang around for for later because uh, the vendor area is now parking and tables. And of course you do need tables to eat at, but uh, yeah, there are no more vendors down here. So uh, maybe we won't be around for them to reset the cider mill. Well, we can't see the cider press in action, unfortunately. They are still cleaning it and uh, unless I want to go ride the train or uh, pick a pumpkin not a lot else to do here we've, we've looked at the food got ourselves some cider for later but uh, yeah we've, we've seen what there is to see this one so yes before we move on to our next location let's just take a, a moment to ignore the cars here and just enjoy the peaceful scenery All right, let's move on to the next place.
think Spidey there is my favorite. If I was going to ride that, not that I would ever fit my legs, probably my gut in there, but if I were going to ride that, I'd ride in Spidey. We have now made our way to stop 38 Abel's Apple Acres. We are greeted by these two cutouts of cartoon bears. I wanted at some point these used to actually be like three-dimensional plush bears. Now Abel's is a little more focused on pies and butters and candy, a little less on the fresh apples, but there are some crafting booths here, and at least in the past, these are some pretty good food here. So I think this is where we're finally going to find something savory to eat. Nah. Not just fruit and uh, fried goods. So let's look around. You know, of course, I mean, there are pies. And there's uh, Miss Apple, who I believe used to talk. But uh, she doesn't talk anymore. But I believe she used to talk. Actually, I think she may have been on a display at the State Fair at one point in her existence. She looks really familiar from, like, the State Fair. They have Barsati's apple cider here, which is quite good, but you can actually get that in the grocery stores. So we don't really... Although, I don't think I've ever seen apple cider in a vending machine before. So that's uh, along with the water that's also 25 cents at uh, Costco. But uh, that's kind of tempting just because it's... Uh, it's interesting. It's $2... Oh, sorry, $3 for juice. $2 for water. Well, let's look around a bit. They have Harry Potter apples. So you can get either Ravenclaw or Gryffindor. Because uh, no one needs Hufflepuff or Slytherin. Sorry, hot cake there. And then we have this little guy. And I, I feel like... I feel like one of these is going to have to come home with us. The Abel's Apple Acres. I think it's something that he's called Apple Teeny. So we're gonna get we're gonna get ourselves a plush apple teeny while we are here. Yep, look, there's a whole bunch of them. Apple teen. Because like Appleton? Appleton? Apple teeny I think would have been cuter because he's small and he's an apple. And that's the name of a drink, which makes it fun. But yeah, I think we're gonna grab us an Appleton. They used to have like a really cramped little ornament section in here but they've, they've opened it up now less stuff and uh you know navigable interesting oh it's a cute little frozen laser cut diorama we'll see that here that i mean this must be harry potter must be harry ron and hermione and hogwarts castle oh, there's another one of those frozen ones it's platform nine and three quarters Well, we got Toy Story down here. And... I was going to guess Hocus Pocus, but I think it's just, like, generic haunted house. Who are you? Mickey and Minnie. The, the coloring on that. It's okay, that's Minnie. The uh, coloring on that was real weird. Okay, so we finally got something savory, some, some protein, something that's not just sugar. We went to Terry's Country Cuisine, I think it's the proper name of it, here at Abel's Apple Acres. And I ordered myself a plate of hog fries, which is French fries topped with barbecued pork, barbecue sauce. My wife got the chicken sandwich with some coleslaw. And have you tried your shit? Yeah. How was it? It was good, very flavorful. So they have more sauces, do they have more sauce? 
because there's you sauce. Can get more sauce, but it's fine. I suspect I'm gonna need more sauce, but I'll try mine without the sauce. How was your how's your slaw? It's slaw. So not good then. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try my hog fries. You get a lot of them. It's a big, healthy, generous portion. I was kind of tempted to get garlic fries, but I figured I should have some protein. I haven't had uh, anything but an apple fritter all day and some samples of fruit. So I figured some protein would be good. So let's try us some hog fries. Yo, they have some sluice. They have sluice over there. It's a very sweet sauce. Good pork flavor. Could use some spice. I, I see some like tapatio and stuff. I might add a little spice to it, but the pork is pretty good. It's good, nice and tender. It's not, at least the bits I've had so far haven't been like, like really fatty or chewy or anything. And yeah, interesting. The, the sweet sauce is interesting on it. I do think I definitely need to add some more sauce to this, but I think this is a pretty good, pretty good lunch here. Certainly a lot of it in any case. The mess potential is pretty high here, especially if I add more sauce to it. But overall good. I think last time we came here, this wasn't open yet when we were around. So uh, this time it's nice to get some get some food. There are cranberries in there. There are cranberries in All right, I'll try the slaw. I'm not a slaw person, but there's cranberries in it. I'll give it a try for something a little different. Yep, that is slaw with cranberries. Cranberries are nice, but yeah, that's, that's still slaw. All right, let's finish our lunch. Down here for the, uh, the younger people, we do have, you can do some gold panning, you can make sand art, you can apparently join up to sell doTERRA, or you can go into the, so we don't have corn mazes up here because they don't grow corn up here, but we do have uh, this lovely fence maze, which uh, at least for smaller children, you wouldn't be able to see over. I, I feel like, I feel like one thing down here just really doesn't fit in with the children's activities, and it might be the pyramid scheme. If you make this a yearly thing, you can... Someone's cut off Johnny Appleseed's hand. His, uh, his hand... Sorry, distracted by the, the severed limb of Johnny Appleseed. Uh, if you make this like a yearly thing, you can bring your kids here, and you can have them stand by the tree to find out how tall this fall. Alternately, as you get older, you can still come and stand by the tree and see how much you've shrunk since the year before. If you stand in the hole, it's going to make you look even shorter. But, uh, what do we add? Uh, about, let me say about 63 inches? That's... So, how is that? It's like five foot something? We have another Bigfoot sighting. Sorry, she's like wild. That's <laughs> <laughs>
So we've made a, an unplanned stop here at number 20, Apple Ridge Farms. Uh, the place we actually were trying to go to, the parking lot was full, but this is right next door to it. There was, I'm not gonna say plenty of parking here, but there was some parking here. And we've been here before, I don't think in any video, but I have been here before. And honestly, I don't remember being anywhere near this busy when we were here before. So I guess, guess they've really stepped things up in the uh, kind of the post-COVID world. I see we have a pumpkin patch here too. We have a maze here as well. And of course we have your requirements for Apple Hill. Uh, we have pies and jams and jellies and fudge. And I'm sure if we look around enough, we'll see wine too. Yeah, there's a thing for apple cider. There'll probably be some wine too. Lots of lots of vineyards up here. I feel I feel there's a certain questionableness to the fact that we have a bunch of bunch of places people go from 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 place to place in cars because nothing's really walkable and drink alcohol. I feel like there's a potential problem there. But let's look around Apple Ridge Farms. We'll start here with the Apple Barn and see what uh, they have to show us. Candied jalapenos. You know, if I didn't just absolutely dislike jalapenos, I would probably try those. We have bear jam, five pepper jelly, sweet potato buddy, buddy, butter with honey, raspberry chipotle, apple cider vinegar, and we wish you a Merry Christmas. I have to go quick. You can get little bottles to pour your own spirits into to have the true spirit of Christmas. Or, you can make all your stuff came directly from the North Pole Distillery. And naturally, what everybody needs, migraine headache Santa. You gotta tell her that she needs to say something too, like so that somebody can cut it. Thank you. Hot 
seems the Apple Ridge Farms Country Store is where they're hiding the Halloween stuff. So we have some cute little things. Not, oh no, there's the gonks, uh, must be gonks. There they are. Also it's very, I feel like Charlie Brown reminiscent looking little statue. And then as we've seen at some of the other places already, we do have the gemstone mining. Also looks like it's actually like open and uh, and being done. The other two we've seen uh, so far, I don't think we're actually in service. This one looks like people are having a good old time looking for gemstones and fossils. just a short hike from where we went to where we actually meant to go. But this is where we actually had meant to go, and that is number 17, Grandpa's Cellar. Which is one we haven't been to also in a, in a while, in a few years. And it looks like it also has gotten a little bit busier, hence the very long line for the bake shop. Luckily, we already bought a pie at Boa Vista, so we don't really need to worry about getting one of those here. But still, let's see what else uh, has got people in here in such large numbers. The bigger size. Nice. We've got Grandpa's Cellar soaps. Of course, we have lots of jams. Salsas. Sober dough. What's the point then? Grandpa's Cellar hot sauces. Good and evil. Dill pickle. Roasted habanero. Get mold spice mix to make your own wassail. And of course, gonks. We do have a red green gonk. If the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Also, we have the, we actually have one similar to this from Hallmark a couple years ago. The 
like chimeric tree gonk where it actually is made from a tree. So it turns out we do need to wait in the long line because there is something in the bake shop that not so baked good, but something we do need to try. So I will see you at the other end of this line. So I know I said I'd see you at the front of the line. We're not at the front of the line. We've been in line for about an hour. The line actually has a, I think they may have closed the line. I think the person standing back there is telling people to go away if they try to get in line. I think the line is closed. So luckily we're, we're gonna get served, but we are now num approximately number 80 in line. So uh, we've been in line an hour, probably have about another hour to wait. So uh, just, just be glad you're watching this on video and not standing here in person. Okay, so we're in the home stretch now. We've been in line for about, ooh, hour and a half or so. And we're, we're, we can finally see the front of the building, so that's plus. I've gotten a little context as to why the line is so incredibly long. And the answer is millennials and Zeds. Uh, apparently, a few weeks ago, the item that we're here for was on, went on TikTok. Someone did a TikTok about it, and people have been, been jamming this place up ever since. I didn't know about that. I mean, I, I, I look at TikTok occasionally, but I didn't know about this. My wife uh, had seen it like last year on Facebook or something. We just didn't make it up here last year. So we decided we would do this this year. And yeah, apparently everybody's doing this this year. But um, we're almost at the front of the line now, probably another 20, 30 minutes. So the line is closed. The ending has now gotten to about where I was standing the last time I made an update. So yeah, we're almost there. Next time you see me, or, or hear me, I guess, you aren't gonna see me, I'm behind the camera. Next time you hear me, hopefully, we'll be looking at something pretty great. All right, after two hours of waiting, we have what is apparently the TikTok sensation at Grandpa's Cellar at Apple Hill. Uh, I, I intended for this to be the finale of the video. I didn't know it was actually that big of a deal when we uh, got here for it. So Grandpa's Cellar sells coffee flights. You've heard of beer flights and wine flights. These are coffee flights, each containing four little mini cups of coffee. And we picked up three of them. They also had a hot chocolate flight, but I figured three flights of coffee was sufficient. Also, actually, there was one other thing. Picked up an apple cider float because something cold and maybe not coffee sounded kind of good too. So we picked up three different flights. We have Grandpa's Classic here at the back row. That would be s'mores, caramel, mocha, and then apple pie spice black cold brew. Then in the center here, we have the fall flight which is pumpkin, salted caramel, apple, and another round of the apple pie spice black cold brew. And then up front here, we have the Halloween flight. This is the one we didn't know about. Uh, we have, down here, we have purple people eater, which is ube. Yes, it's that purple yam. I've seen a lot of these going back without that last one finished. Uh, then we have pumpkin white chocolate mocha, we have caramel apple. This apparently was supposed to be something else, but whatever it is, they ran out of it. It looks like something pistachio maybe, but the witch's uh, legs have been made caramel apple. So presumably maybe somewhat similar to these two. And then finally the black widow, which is that black cold brew marshmallow rimmed with cotton candy. So we're gonna try our 12 little cups of coffee here and then, of course, we'll try our, our float, which will probably be all nice and melty by then. So let's start at the back with Grandpa's Classic. We'll start with the Apple Pie Spice Black Cold Brew. We'll try a little sip of that. The Apple Pie Spice is nice. It is an unsweetened black coffee, which I'm guessing is not your thing. Nope. Yeah, it's um, it's not something I would normally go for, but I mean, it's not it's not very much of it here. Although we do have two portions of it, so we do each get one. 
all to ourselves. I'm getting a very nice look. No, that's uh, you can have it all. <laughs> but the apple, the, the spice in it's quite nice. Yes. I can definitely taste the apple pie spice. And you know, it's nice to have something other than just pumpkin spice all the time. Okay, next is our mocha. Let's try a little mocha. It's a little sticky. Uh, it's definitely sweeter than the cold brew. Sorry, I'm making a mess here. That's why you hear napkins rustling around. That's more of my flavor. Yeah, that's that's actually quite nice. Uh, definitely a nice chocolatey flavor to it. Nice and sweetened. Uh, definitely kind of go back and forth to the two. Might, might be pretty good. Or maybe mix them. Next, let's try our caramel. Got a little uh, whipped cream on my hands. Try that. Not as good as the mocha. Not bad. So it's nice and creamy, but I do like the mocha better. What do you think? Yeah, it's got a, a little bit of a strange aftertaste. You think? Mm -hmm. I'm getting an aftertaste. I'll try again. Maybe a little something there, yeah. It's not unpleasant. But yeah, I mean, there is a... I think it might just be the coffee, though. Could be. I think it's just the coffee leaving a bit of an aftertaste. Next up, finishing off Grandpa's Classic, we'll try s'more. You can see little little graham cracker bits on the top there. Chocolate. I'm guessing some sort of marshmallow flavoring will be in this somewhere. Or maybe whipped cream is marshmallow, I don't know. <laughs> it's less sweet than the other ones. Yeah. It's a good one. I don't like as much as the mocha, but it's not bad. No, I like it better than the caramel. Because then the aftertaste? Mm -hmm. I think I taste the graham cracker in a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. All right, so next we'll move on to the fall flight. We can skip this now. We've already tried it the same one as that. And move on directly to the apple, which comes with a couple little dehydrated apple bits on top of it. Some whipped cream. I'm guessing it's going to be another sweetened one. Let's give it a try. <laughs> kind of a sweetened, creamier version of the black cold brew, I think. I'm getting like apple spice in there as well as a little bit of apple flavor. I like that one better than the cold brew. Oh yeah, definitely, because it's sweetened. It's There's sweetened and lightened. You think? I think it's the apple. Because I don't think there's any actual any actual apple in this one. I think this is just apple pie spice. This has actual apple in it as well. Maybe. Try a little piece of apple. You have one too. Yep, that's apple. Yep, crunchy. Dehydrated apple. It was there. Might as well drink it. Drink it, eat it. And then next is our salted caramel. So this should taste a little different. Should taste a little saltier, presumably. I'm not really getting the salt, I'm getting the caramel. But it tastes fairly similar, honestly, to that one to me. Yeah. Are you getting the salt? I don't get that aftertaste in this one, though. Interesting. But I don't really get the salt. You get the salt. I don't get the. I don't get a difference between be. that caramel and that caramel. I don't know. Because that should be a lot, should be a little salty. I'm not. I'm not getting salt out of the salted caramel. Let me try. Have another little sip. That one's a little more savory too. So, lesson learned here: gesturing with straws that you're actually using to drink out of <laughs> is a horrible idea unless you want to fling little drops of coffee everywhere. Uh, that's, that's the mess we're making behind the camera and a little bit in front of the camera as well. But 
I mean, the savoriness is probably the salt then. Yeah, well, let me, that's what I was thinking. Let me try this one again. Yeah. Okay, I do think, mm -hmm. I do think the caramel is a little sweeter. So maybe that's, maybe that's the salt then. But yeah, that one, that one is definitely not as sweet as the other caramel. I prefer this one over that one. Okay. All right, next up, finishing off the fall flight is our pumpkin. All right, so I'm guessing my pumpkin is probably just gonna be pumpkin spice, which would be the brown stuff on top here. So this is just gonna basically be a pumpkin spice latte is my guess. I'm guessing it's not gonna actually taste of pumpkin. Mm. I am not a fan of that one. Nope, that one's very bitter. It's it's very nutmeggy. I like nutmeg, but but it's it very a lot of cinnamon and cinnamon. Bitter, bitterness. It's pumpkin pie. It's pumpkin pie spice. Mm -hmm. Now that's I don't taste pumpkin. It doesn't taste like a pumpkin pie. No. It tastes like pumpkin pie spice. It tastes like exactly what I don't particularly care for about pumpkin pie spiced everything this time of year. So I'm gonna say, even though we didn't try this one, it's, we know it's the exact same as that. I'm gonna say I think that's actually my least favorite mm -hmm. out of the second flight. Uh, my favorite out of the first flight is the mocha. Mm -hmm. Least favorite, probably gonna go with the cold brew just because it's, it's just unsweetened, unlightened cold brew coffee. But in this one, I think my least favorite is the, uh, is the pumpkin pie. I think my favorite's probably the apple. Yeah. All right, so moving on to our last flight, the Halloween flight. We'll try the one that I think is probably gonna universally between both of us be our least favorite, ube. Ube is not a flavor I have managed to get my head around. I know it's an acquired taste and it's one that I have yet to be able to acquire. It is that purple yam flavor you see a lot of Japanese treats of, and I, I've never, never developed a like for it. But let's, let's, see if, let's see if today is the day that changes. Actually, that is surprisingly good. Maybe I just had like really low expectations. It's nice and sweet. It's better than the apple pie, or the pumpkin pie rather. It doesn't taste it's like better, ube to me. It's better than pumpkin pie. Definitely. I really thought this would potentially would be the worst one of the lot. It's all right. I, it, I'm not saying it's, it's like fantastic, but it's so much better than I thought it was going to be that it, it's, it's great. It's great by comparison of what I expected. Next, we'll try our pumpkin white chocolate mocha, which um, I'm hoping is not like that, but let's find out. It's not as sweet as the ube, but it's definitely better than the pumpkin pie. Uh, maybe because of the white chocolate. It's a little, it's sweeter. It's not, it's not as overpoweringly pumpkin pie spice flavored. Ironically, the addition of chocolate has actually made it, I think, taste a little bit more like a pumpkin pie than the pumpkin pie flavored one. So, so far... Not so bitter either. It's not. It's, it's, uh, it's not a flavor I would come and order a whole drink of, but it's certainly better than the, the one in the fall classic or the fall flavor. All right. Next is our caramel apple which could be interesting, the caramel ones have been kind of hit or miss for us. Let's see how caramel apple is. I expected that to be a lot sweeter, uh, being caramel. It's not, it's not, I, I don't really get caramel or apple out of it. Did I get the wrong, no, it has to be the right one. Cause that's obviously the one with marshmallow and spiderweb. Yeah, I don't, I don't get caramel apple out of that at all. It's just kind of coffee. lightly sweetened, lightened coffee. It's not bad. I'm gonna say it's the worst of this lot so far. But our last one, the Black Widow, is not lightened or sweetened. It looks like, other than the the mountain of fluff on top of it. So this probably is going to be pretty strong if I can pierce through its shield, its marshmallow and. Uh, candy floss top there. We've been seeing these little plastic spiders 
like all over the place since we got here. Now we know where they're coming from. They're coming from these drinks. Yeah, you're you're probably not gonna like that one. That is that is more unsweetened cold brew coffee. It's not bad. If we can like maybe if we can push the cotton candy down into it, take the spider off and push that cotton candy down into it to sweeten it up a bit. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna be the one for you. All right, so this lot, um, honestly, I've actually given some of my favorites to Ube. Uh, it's, the Halloween one's kind of a, not the best lot. The uh, the pumpkin white chocolate is definitely better than the pumpkin pie, but I think I like the Ube the best out of this one. I like the pumpkin. Do you I like the pumpkin best? Yeah. And the white, I'm gonna say the worst is our witch here with the caramel apple, tasting neither of caramel nor apple. Not for me. The, for me, the worst one. <laughs> you like this one better than the than the cold brew? Yeah. Wow. Because I just think because the cold I guess maybe because the cold brew tastes like exactly what I thought it was going to taste like, and that tastes not at all like what I thought it was going to taste like. So maybe that's what's doing it for me. So, but overall, though, what's your favorite overall? I'm guessing you like the mocha the best. The mocha. The mocha for me. Um, actually, I'm gonna go with the mocha as well. I'm gonna say the mocha is the best one. The the worst one I'm guessing for you is gonna be. So I'm gonna say the worst one is the pumpkin pie overall out of the three. Yeah. You think the pumpkin pie is worse than the than, than just the plain cold brew? I mean, they kind of are the same for me because they're both unsweetened. Right. So. Well, the pumpkin. I don't think the pumpkin pie is supposed to be unsweetened. It's no, it's, it's just so heavily hit with the seasoning mm -hmm. that it overpowers everything else. Yeah. So it's just high. You mm. can't pick one that's worse. Mm. All right. And then to finish off, let's have a sip. Something a little more refreshing. An apple cider float. And the last time we did one of these videos, we had an apple cider slushy, which I think may have had ice cream in it. I don't remember. Mm. Or a smoothie or a slushy. I don't remember. It was a different location. But uh, this time, an apple cider float, because why not? Kind of a palate cleanser after all the coffee. Mm, that is strong. Not bad though. That's refreshing. It is. It's that's, I, that's what I kind of what I figured when I ordered is like, can need something a little, a little like a break after twelve mini cups of coffee, and I think a little apple cider, especially because it's Apple Hill. We're doing an Apple Hill video. We've had a, a disturbing lack of apple in our Apple Hill video. That is one thing that you, you don't get a lot of like apple foods other than the traditional pies and turnovers and stuff. You don't get a lot of like trying to do new stuff, no apple burgers or anything here. But uh, yeah, that's quite nice. It's nice, nice like just hit on your taste buds after all of the coffee. Well, uh, Grandpa's Cellar is basically closed now. As you can see, there's like not many other people here anymore. And we have to hike back to the car. So I think we're gonna end the video here with our grand flight. We'll take our return flight to the waste area and then head back to our car. But I hope you found this trip at all interesting or entertaining. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for joining us today, and I will see you in the next video.